Shanghai's landlords face difficulty seeking tenants as rents fall as much as 20% in the city amid COVID control measures. The South China Morning Post cited a property data provider, CreePrice.cn, reporting that monthly rate in the city fell 5.6% in September to $14.20, 103 yuan per square meter. A real estate agency owner in Shanghai told the news outlet homeowners are disappointed with the falling housing demand. He added high-end homes cannot find tenants unless the landlords agree to cut the rates by at least 20%. Four months ago, when the authorities lifted a two-month lockdown that confined 25 million residents to their homes, the monthly rent for a three-bedroom apartment in downtown Shanghai was about $2,760, 20,000 yuan. Today, the rent for the same apartment is about $2,070 as vacancies have surged across the financial hub. Moreover, the authorities strengthened COVID control measures. Many residents and foreign expats leave the city to avoid being trapped again, causing more rents to decline. In late March, the financial hub imposed sweeping two-month lockdowns, severely disrupting business operations and residents' daily life activities. Even after the lockdown was lifted, Shanghai gave no sign of relaxing the zero-COVID policy as it planned to build a permanent quarantine center that could house thousands of people. Earlier this month, Shanghai and other megacities saw infections surge after a week-long national holiday. As a result, authorities required schools, bars, entertainment venues, and tourist spots to shut down. The city announced that all 16 districts would undergo routine COVID testing at least twice a week until November 10th. Earlier this month, Reuters cited data from the China Index Academy, reporting that Shanghai property sales by floor area dropped 47 percent during the national holiday. It was China before communism. Shen Yun Creations the streaming platform from Shen Yun, featuring world-class dance, past programs, and all original music. Masterclasses, behind the scenes, comedy, and more. Explore ShenYunCreations.com. Hangotong 发生踩踏事故的离太院区深受韩国青年人和外籍人士的欢迎周六晚首尔疫情解封后首次举办范圣节活动估计有十万人聚集人群涌入四米宽的下坡小巷时发生意外场面惊悚周六晚首尔疫
信唐人电视台记者严峰、瑞丽综合报道。Meng Tian literally means "dreaming of the heaven," and symbolizes Chinese people's yearning for the universe beyond the sky. As a second lab module of the Chinese space station, Meng Tian has a total length of 17.88 meters and weighs over 23 tons. It consists of four sections: working cabin, cargo airlock cabin, payload cabin, and resource cabin. Meng Tian is a module with the strongest load capacity among all the modules of the Chinese space station. First, we have 13 containers in the space station. We also have three containers in the space station. One is a open space station, one is a closed space station, and one is a fixed space station. Besides, we have three containers in the space station. We have a storage unit in the space station, and we have a storage unit in the space station. 呃，空间站提供了三十七个载荷空位。Microgravity scientific experiments will be carried out in Meng Tian Lab, but it will be more convenient to carry out external experiments outside the cabin. 首先，我们配置有货物进出舱的功能，呃，主要是通过载荷转移机构和货物气闸舱完成载荷在舱内和舱外的交互，这样会提高同一个工位的利用效率。There is a special equipment on Meng Tian Lab for releasing micro spacecraft. With the help of astronauts, the payload transfer tool, and the robotic arm, the equipment will eject small satellites weighing about 100 kilograms to its orbit, just like a slingshot. Meng Tian Lab module is mainly used for conducting experiments and working. Meng Yao says he and his team have spent more than 10 years. Turning the idea into reality, these valuable experiences have laid a solid foundation for the development of more advanced spacecraft in the. A documentary film called Diagnosia, which just premiered at the Sundance Film Festival, recreated the inside details of a psychiatric ward for patients of internet addiction, a common disease in China. According to Sixth Tone, the film is based on the experience of Jung, one of the film's producers. He was diagnosed as an internet addict and put into a psychiatric hospital at 17. Even though he was there for only a few months, he was still obsessed with the treatment as non-human. Jung was sent to the Youth Psychological Growth Base, located on the outskirts of Beijing, for treatment. Here, Jung and many other patients had to take antidepressants twice a day. The nurses even shown lights in their mouths to ensure they weren't hiding the medicine behind their tongues. If Jung disobeyed orders during military training, the instructors might beat him severely. He was also locked in a dark room for several days. But the terrifying aspect of the mental hospital is that he must follow any regulations that the staff members suddenly make. Fortunately, he was released after one month in 2007 after being evaluated by the hospital's doctor. Such hospitals have exploded in China over the past 20 years, but Zhang judged that they were set up just to make money. In 2007, the hospital charged Zhang's family $1,376 or 10,000 yuan a month. Not only that, these mental hospitals have no proof that their method is effective. Zhang told Sixth Tone that many people come in not because they're addicted to games. When they are released, it's not because they're cured. It is worth noting that the mental institution that once admitted Zhang for treatment has published a study showing the criteria for assessing a game addiction, which is accepted by both the scientific world and the public. However, according to Zhang, this research has many problems. First of all, these results run counter to conventional ethical standards. Zhang said, "They didn't tell us that we would be used in experiments. Many people in the clinic had been tricked into going there." Parents even used sleeping pills to bring them in. In addition, none of the patients had severe psychiatric symptoms. The supposed criteria for admission was that a person played games for more than six hours a day for three months. However, Zhang believes his parents wanted him put away while they were going through marital difficulties, and the center was only too happy to oblige. Filmmaker Zhang's film Diagnosia has caused a wave of attention in the film industry. Receiving a lot of nominations at film festivals, 
The film won the Best Chinese Film Award at the Sandbox Immersive Festival. Dear viewers, our channel is now available on SafeChat. SafeChat is an online social platform that promotes free speech. Here, people can share truthful content quickly and securely. We will be presenting exclusive content on this platform, so please follow us on SafeChat for the fastest updates. SafeChat is now on Google Play and the App Store. Chung 共同追求美好未来的殷切希望两国人民友谊地久天长những tình cảm rất sâu nặng tôi tin rằng với phần thưởng cao quý này sẽ là nguồn động viên rất lớn đối với việc chúng ta tiếp tục củng cố phát triển hơn nữa quan hệ giữa việt nam và trung quốc